All right, you guys, uh, I'm going to hope to have these lessons up here. So here's uh, the first review, you guys, that we have for our Integrated Math 2 class. And, <clears throat> and next year I'll be teaching IM3, so be looking for those lessons uh, at MrMathBlog.com. All right, let's get started here, you guys. So so you have a proof here. So uh, our final is going to have a proofs part final and, um, and a, a calculation part, a non-proofs final. So these handouts, you guys, mimic the types of questions that will be on your final. Okay, so hopefully you guys are, uh, will study and do well on this final. Okay, so here we have this rectangle right here. And our goal is to prove that this is the midpoint of this side. So what I'm going to do is get uh, this triangle congruent to this triangle right here. And then I can say um, uh, by CPCTC that this side equals this side. And then so by definition of a midpoint, uh, this has to be the midpoint, okay? And since it's a rectangle, what I'm going to do is use these two opposite sides are congruent right here. And uh, this is a right angle, so we have a right triangle. And then this given right here is this hypotenuse. So we're going to get them congruent by HL theorem. And then that should do it. Okay, so let's go ahead and throw the given down right there. So, okay. Um, now, sometimes uh, we'll use more than seven steps. Sometimes we won't use as many as seven steps. But we try to give you enough lines on there to uh, complete this proof. And I think I have to add a step on here. So, all right. So we got a rectangle. And so because it's a rectangle, I'm going to say the opposite sides are congruent. So this top piece equals this bottom piece. Opposite sides of a rectangle are congruent. Notice we mark the figures. Always mark the figures when you're getting things congruent. Okay, and then the next thing we can do is uh, say that um, th those are right angles right there because rectangles uh, are four right angles. Okay, so right angles gives us those right triangles right there. All right, now we can throw the next given down. So that given says that those are equal. So those triangles are now congruent by this is the hypotenuse of this right triangle. And this is the hypotenuse of this right triangle, and these are legs. So by the HL theorem, those triangles are congruent. Now I can say that this side equals this side by CPCTC. Okay, all right, and then notice we did YM, which is second and third letter, so it equals second and third letter RM right there. And then by definition of a midpoint, we can say that that's the midpoint. So there we go, we got our proof right there, okay? All right, let's do that with this one right here. All right, so here um, uh, we want to prove that these angles are congruent. Well, we can get them congruent if we can get these triangles congruent by CPCTC. And we'll get these triangles congruent. I think it's uh, side, side, side on this. All right, let's go ahead and put the next first given down and mark the figure, okay? And then um, uh, you can do reflexive right now. I don't think I did. I think I went ahead and put the next given down because when it bisects this bottom piece, by definition of a bisector, this side equals this side. So let's go ahead and put that down, definition of a segment bisector, and then we marked it. Then the reflexive property. Now those triangles are congruent by side, 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 and then angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 by CPCTC. Okay, all right, so here we go. We're going to simplify these radicals. Okay, remember the square root of negative 1 is i. So this is i root square root of positive 24, okay? And then uh, uh, 24, uh, prime factorization is 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. It's 4 times 6, okay? And then a pair of 2's come out that comes out with the i, so we have 2i and these two go back, go back together, 2i root 6. Okay, so this is i root, and this is uh, 2 times 121. 121 is 11 times 11, so that becomes 11i root 2. All right, okay, so this is 3i. This is i root 12. So what I'm going to do is um, uh, break the 12 down as 2 times 2 times 3. So here's i root positive 12. So 3i times i is 3i squared, and we can combine this 2 with these guys with this one here. And then remember, i squared, i squared is negative 1. So 3i squared is negative 3. This becomes negative 3. And then we'll pull a pair of 2's out right there. It comes out as 1, 2 on the outside. So we get negative 6 root 6. All right, so here um, I broke this all the way down. A broke 18 down as uh, 2 times 9, which is 2 times 3 times 3. There's 4 X's and there's 7 Y's. There it is right there. And then I pulled out. Uh, I'm going to get a, a pair of 3's out, a pair of X's, a pair of X's, a pair of Y's, a pair of Y's, a pair of Y's. 
we're left with a 2 and 1 left over y on there, okay? So uh, we finally get uh, 3x squared y cubed and, and then root 2y. All right, so here I'm going to FOIL this stuff out. So first times first is 28, okay? Outer times outer is 35y. Inner times inner is negative 12i. Did I say y? i? And then negative 3i times uh, 5i is negative 15i squared. Okay, remember i squared is negative 1, so negative 15i squared becomes plus 15, okay? And then we combined these like terms right here, 35i uh, minus 12i is 23i. All right, and this 28 plus 15 now becomes, what's that, 43, so 43 plus 23i. Okay, on this one, we got to um, simplify the square root of 48, and we got to get rid of the i downstairs. You can't have an i downstairs, so let's do that right off the bat. Multiply it by 1, but 1 is i over i. So we get i root 48 over 3i squared. Okay, now remember, i squared is negative 1, so this is negative 3. Never uh, leave the negative downstairs. Always float it out in front of the fraction right there. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so uh, 48 is 16 times 3, or you can think of 48 as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 4 of them times 3. Anyways, you, you're going to end up getting uh, 4i root 3 all over 3. Okay, notice how this negative floats out in front of the fraction right there. All right, all right, so let's solve. Okay, notice how this one does not have an x in it. This one has a negative 2x. This one has a 3x in it. So when it doesn't have an x, we like to solve for x squared. So when we do that, we subtracted 14 from both sides, then divide by by 3, okay? Then we square root it. Don't forget the plus or minus part, you guys. It's plus or minus the square root of 2. And then it's going to be pull the i out as plus or minus i root 2. Okay, <clears throat> okay. and on this one, on quadratics, almost always we want it to equal 0, except for this one. I'll show you in just a second. But let's set it equal to 0. So if we sub, um, uh, subtract 3 from both sides, we get 9 here. So let's do that first, okay? Now the reason why we want it to equal 0 is to see if we can factor it. If we can factor it, great. Now this one, there's no factors of 9 that add to negative 2. So we can use the quadratic formula because it doesn't factor, or we can complete the square. And this one's a good completing the square one because this is a 1x squared, and that's an even number. So completing the square requires us to throw the negative 9 over there on that side. So we'll put it over there. <coughs> Excuse me. And then by completing the square of x squared plus bx, what we do is we take half of this number and square it. Okay, so we so here uh, b over two is half of b, so uh, half of b squared. So half of this number is negative one. Negative one squared is one. So we're going to add plus one to both sides. Okay, do you see where that plus one came from? Half of this number squared. All right. So what happens is is it gives us a binomial squared x minus 1 squared. It's always the square root of this that goes in here. Negative 9 plus 1 is negative 8, okay? Now we square root both sides. Don't forget the plus or minus, okay? And then negative 8 uh, becomes i. Don't forget the i comes out. And 8 is 4 times 2, so we get 2i root 2 plus or minus. Add 1 to both sides, and there's our answer. Okay, so here, this one has a 3x, so I'm going to subtract 3x and add 1 to both sides, see if we can factor that. Okay, this one does factor. This one's pretty easy. When it ends with 1 times 1, and this is 2x uh, squared, so we get uh, 2x uh, here and 1x here, and this is 1 and 1. Since that's negative and that's positive, these both have to be a negative, a negative times a negative. And then just mentally check, does outer which is um, outer times outer is negative 2x, plus inner times inner is negative 1x. That adds to negative 3x. So it does factor. So we can set these factors equal to 0. Here we go plus 1, plus 1, and we get 2x equals 1, or x equals 1 half. And then this one plus 1, plus 1, and we get x equals 1. Okay? All right, so here we have a circle. So let's graph the circle. Write an equation. So the equation is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals the radius squared. Okay, so here we go. x minus a minus 2 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 4 squared. Clean it up, we get that. All right, let's go ahead and graph negative 2, 1 and do the radius of 4. So we'll go to the left, 2, up 1, and we'll do our boundaries. So we go up 4, down 4, to the left 4, to the right 4, okay, and those are our boundaries right there, 2, 3, 4, okay, 1, 2, 
Yeah, I got four. Sorry, I'm counting. Thought I did five there for a second. All right, and then there's our boundaries and make your circle right there. All right, so here's another one here. So, so we need to get the radius of this. So we know it's this right there. So to get the radius, plug in this x for this x and plug in this y for this y, and that'll get us our radius right there. Okay, so when we do that, we get the radius of five. Okay, so the center is at negative one, negative two, and the radius is five. So our equation is that, and then negative one, negative two, and the radius is five. Up five, down five, left five, right five. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry, I'm out in my truck. Because uh, someone's teaching in my classroom on my prep period, and it's a film class, and it's all dark in there, and I can't see, so it sounds like I'm in a box. I am. I'm in my truck. All right, there's that one. Okay, here. This one says to complete the square. To complete the square, we get the X stuff together and get the Y stuff together, and we throw this on this side over here. All right, so what's half of 4 squared? Half of 4 is 2. 2 squared is 4, so we'll add 4 here, so we'll balance it out and add 4 over here. Half of 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1, so we'll add 1 here, but to balance it out, we got to add 1 over there. <clears throat> so... This factors to x plus 2 squared, y minus 1 squared, and over here we get 9. Okay, so there's our centers at negative 2, negative 1, and the radius is 3. Okay, I'm sorry, negative 2, positive 1. Okay, and then uh, there's your circle right there. <clears throat> Whoops, I got a hustle here and I heard the bell. Okay, so here, um, this is a parabola from uh, module 12.2. Uh, we graph this parabola right there. So here's module 12, 2. So when it's in standard form, x minus h squared equals 4p times y minus k squared. Or if the y is being squared, then the 4p x minus h is over here. Notice how k always hangs out with y and h always hangs out with x right there. And the 4p is that negative 8. Okay, so let's go ahead and start plotting all this. Okay, so this is y minus 0 squared and this is negative 8 times x minus is 0 squared. 4p is negative 8. So divide by 4, we get p is negative 2. So the vertex is at 0, 0. There's the vertex right there. And p is the distance from the vertex to the focus. So 2 that way. And then your directrix is 2 that way. Remember, Remember, you guys, that the the um, the vertex always is in the middle, and the vertex always surrounds the focus, okay? So I know it's going to the left, okay, when it surrounds the focus, okay? So let's um, put it in this form right here. This tells me how much it goes to the left. So from the vertex, if we go up 2, it goes to the left 1 eighth of 2 squared. Well, 2 squared is 4, so 1 eighth of 4 is a half. So if we go up 2, it goes to the left a half. Go down 2 to the left a half. Okay, I don't want to go up 1 because 1 squared and an eighth is just barely an eighth. Okay, let's go up 4. 4 squared is 16. An eighth of that is um, is 2. Okay, let's go up 6. 6 squared is 36. An eighth of that is 4.5. That's how much we go to the left. All right, there's our parabola right there. Okay, and your axis of symmetry is just folded right down the middle right there. Okay, this last one right here, this is the same graph except that um, the vertex is at uh, negative 2, positive 1. It's the exact same graph. Um, so just go to the left 2, up 1, and P is still negative 2. It goes to the left 2 and to the right 2. So there's the directrix this time. The directrix is at x equals 0. And the axis of symmetry is at y equals 1. And the focus is at the left 2 from the vertex. So go to the left 2. That's going to be at negative 4, 1. Okay. All right, you guys. I hope that makes sense. And I think we're done. Are we done? Yeah. Oops. Yeah. I'm just graphing that and moving around. All right. Take care, you guys.